Hello everyone and in this video today I'll be talking about gene mapping in fungi which is also called as tetrad analysis which is also called as tetrad analysis in fungi and uh, gene mapping as you all know is the way by which we position each gene on the chromosome with relative distances between each gene and in this way we can we can have an idea about the linkage and the linkage groups. Now, uh, till now when you have studied gene mapping or linkage analysis in diploid organisms like Drosophila, maize, peas, human and so on. So, these diploid organisms actually each one is a product of a union between two gametes, two haploid gametes. Okay, And these haploid gametes are products of meiosis. And we all know that each meiosis gives rise to four haploid spores. So therefore, fertilization in a diploid organism is between one random gamete of that uh, meiotic event with another haploid gamete of another meiotic event. Okay? And we have no idea or we cannot uh, just by looking at the product, we will not be able to tell from where this has come from. Okay, now, uh, but in fungi, the difference is that these are all haploid organisms. For most of the life cycle, they remain as a haploid organism and they undergo vegetative reproduction. And each haploid organism is actually uh, each of these, sorry, each of these uh, spore, okay, it is representing the meiotic product. So here we are able to visualize all the four haploid meiotic products and also uh, the, there is no dominance. So therefore the genotype is reflected in the phenotype, right? Another advantage that fungi gives is these uh, spores that we ha they have, these spores have a visible uh, structure, okay? You can uh, differentiate between two diff spores. Also, there are a lot of nutritional mutants. So, therefore, you can uh, study the genotype by just looking at the growth conditions. The two important fungi which are used for analysis in tetrad analysis or for most of the studies, they are Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is commonly called as Baker's yeast, and Neurospora crassa. This is bread mold. When you leave a bread, you see the mold growing. So that's Neurospora crassa. Now Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, they, these are, as I said, they are mostly uh, in a haploid state. They undergo vegetative reproduction and repro asexual reproduction. But under certain conditions, they can the two different strains can come together and form a diploid cell. Now in Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the diploid state remains for some time until again and there is an environmental pressure that they have to undergo meiosis. So they undergo meiosis. Whereas on the other hand, Neurospora crassa, the diploid condition is only very transient. So most of the life cycle, they are asexually reprodu reproducing. They can come under, uh, they can undergo sexual reproduction depending upon the environmental condition. But immediately they undergo meiosis. Now, um, these uh, Saccharomyces, uh, the, the mating, when we say mating between the two strains, so most of them, most of the time, there are two strains that are present in fungi that's called as A and alpha. A and alpha. So these are the two strains and these are different strains. So mating can take place between them. Now, if you look at this diagram over here, just a second, I'll... Uh, so, if you look at this uh, diagram over here, uh, let us say if this is A strain, this is alpha strain, this is the vegetative cycle for A and alpha. They undergo the spores, they can undergo uh, fusion, form a zygote. Now, this zygote in Saccharomyces cerevisiae remains for some time and then it can undergo meiosis and gives rise to four spores. Now in fun fungi, the advantage is that these spores, they are held in a sac-like structure called as ascus, okay. And therefore, these spores are called as ascospores, 
they are called as ascospores now you can see over here that all the four products of meiosis they are held together and when they are mature the ascus will burst open the spores will be released and they will start germinating okay now in uh, neurospora crassa again we have a and alpha and they undergo fusion to form a diploid state which is a zygote now when again as i said they are uh, they remain in a diploid state very transiently so then they undergo meiotic division so if you have so you have meiosis 1 there are two cells two nuclei then in meiosis 2 there are four nuclei however the difference between uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae and eurospora crassa is that after meiosis second each of these spores they undergo a mitotic division so as a result the ascus has eight spores of these each of these two are actually identical because they are product from one meiotic gamete now uh, how you will notice one more difference over here and that has a major implication on gene mapping and that is uh, in saccharomyces cerevisiae these uh, spores are placed randomly in the ascus so as a result they are called as un un ordered okay and this is called as tetrad why tetrad because there are four spores that are present now this tetrad is actually same as the one we see in uh, after uh, uh, during meiosis when the two homologous chromosome with the two two chromat two homologous chromosome each with two sister chromatids it forms a bivalent or a tetrad so this tetrad and they are they essentially they mean the same thing now why it is called as unordered because the spores are arranged randomly in this sac like structure however in neurospora crassa as you can see because of the elongated structure of uh, the ascus the spores are arranged linearly so therefore the meiotic spindle elongates in an in one direction so you know that each of this product is actually coming from this particular cell right so this kind of uh, uh, this kind of an uh, arrangement it's called as ordered okay now tetrad and this is ordered tetrad now ordered tetrad they have they provide additional advantages to a researcher and that we'll also see what kind of what kind of advantages produces now when we analyze or when we look at the genes we know that uh, uh, because they are haploid so whatever is a genotype is reflected in the phenotype now we'll look at the one example first and in this example what we'll see is we will analyze uh, the tetrads the kind of tetrads that are obtained when the two genes are not linked okay so when the two genes are not linked what will happen so here what we have taken is the genotype we are using the nutritional mutants you know that in in fungi the nutritional mutants uh, you have prototrophs you have auxotrophs and the convention in fungi or e fungi is that the wild type are written in capital okay and the mutants are written in small letters okay now uh, so in this there are two parents we have taken two genes we are considering two genes which are not linked this is his it's written in small so therefore this is a mutant for histidine which means that this strain let's say if it is a strain okay and this is alpha strain so a strain requires histidine for growth whereas it's wild type for tryptophan on the other hand the alpha strain is wild type for histidine but it's mutant for tryptophan and you should uh, understand over here that the two different types of chromosomes i have drawn and they are they you can uh, understand them by the way this is a straight line this is a wavy line so when a wavy line for histidine as well as tryptophan is representing the alpha strain this is a straight line for histidine tryptophan representing the a strain now in a diploid condition what happens all these chromosomes they come together so now this has become a diploid there are two homologous chromosomes one is histidine they are heterozygous 
one is histidine uh, mutant other is histidine wild type this is tryptophan wild type tryptophan mutant now once they undergo as or as soon as they get ready for meiosis they you know that each meiotic event is actually preceded by uh, dna replication so all these uh, chromosomes they replicate so you have two bivalents over here and they are held together at the centromere now as you have seen for all organisms that for meiosis they are all aligned in the metaphase plate so these are aligned in the metaphase plate in this manner and there are the two homologous chromosomes so this goes to one pole this goes to the other pole so the product of meiotic one division you will have uh, this going to one pole and this going to the other pole so you have a situation like this so this is one uh, set and this is the other set in meiosis 2 what will happen the set, the homologous chromosomes will the chromatids sister chromatids will not separate because because of the centromeric separation over here and as a result you see that you have four different sets that are produced okay now these sets you have uh, this is uh, this is uh, histidine mutant and this is tryptophan wild type and this is histidine wild type and tryptophan mutant now what you will notice over here is that this combination of genotype it's actually the same as parental right so because this is same as parental and there are two types so therefore this is called as this kind of ascus which is formed is called as parental dietype so what you see over here is each ascospore over here is represented here like this right so all the four spores are present and this kind of a condition where the parental combination is uh, reflected this is called as parental dietype dietype because there are two types now let us imagine because uh, the the chromosomes are arranged on the metaphase plates randomly so they can again be arranged in a different manner now in this condition what will happen let's see uh, the 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 this this condition this the arrangement of this homologous this these chromosomes are now reversed so as a result you have his his minus and trip minus going to one pole and his plus and trip plus going to the other pole like this now again because of uh, uh, the segregation takes place and now what you have is you have this situation in which you have histidine minus and this is tryptophan minus coming in one cell okay this is also histidine minus and tryptophan minus these two are identical and this is histidine plus and tryptophan plus okay so now what we are getting is we are getting again there are two types of spores this is one type and this is the other type there are two types of spores but these two are non parental right these are called as non parental because the the uh, the genotype it does not resemble the parental so therefore this is non parental and again it is dietype so therefore this is non parental dietype now there's another kind of tetra that can be produced and that's called as tetra type now what is tetra type let's imagine if there's a recombination between this histidine over this is um, his this is his four and this is his four so there is a recombination between this sister chromat these two sister chromat non sister chromatids over here so you have a recombinant event so this is now recombination has taken place now when recombination has taken place eventually what you will get is again you will get the four different spores but here these four different spores because of the recombination they are all now different this is his four trip minus uh, sorry his four minus trip plus tryptophan wild type histidine wild type tryptophan wild type histidine mutant tryptophan mutant and histidine wild type and tryptophan mutant so all these four spores are now different because they are different they are called as tetra type okay now what you should understand over here is in tetra type you have two parentals and two uh, recombinants non parentals right so if you have two parentals and two non parentals so this is so you have 50% over here which are parental and 50% are recombinants okay 
Now, how do you analyze the tetrads? Okay. Now, this if you have obtained the tetrads, you have to analyze it. Now, when you analyze it, let's say you have uh, you have seen. So, what do you do? You first find out what are the number of PD and NPD. PD is parental diatype and NPD is non-parental diatype. Okay. As in independent assortment, the recombinants and non-recombinants are 50 percent. Okay. The 1 is to 1 ratio if the genes are not linked. So, in the same way over here, because this is representing the parental rec combination, this is representing the non-parental recombination. So, therefore, if PD is equal to NPD, then genes are gene, genes are not linked. Okay. Then the genes are not linked. So therefore, uh, when you analyze, and let's say if you have if you have done a t analysis and you find let's say this is thirty eight, this is uh, twenty nine. Okay, oh, sorry, uh, thirty eight and forty one. Let's say, and if 41, 7, this is 31. Hmm? Yeah, it comes to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, 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 this is 21. Yeah. Hmm. So, if you have 38, you have 41, and you have 21, these are the different types of combination of spores over here. So, once you analyze them, you see that the PD and NPD, it's almost same. So, when PD and NPD is almost same, this is called as, uh, we can now know that the genes are not linked. So, this is about the condition when the genes are not linked and now we will see uh, what will happen when the genes are linked. Okay? So, that will be in the following video.